Hello and welcome. My name is Matthew Marquette. In this video, I wanted to help you guys understand a couple of possible alternatives to modeling that you might have. Being that I have personally a background in architecture, I like to think spline models for a lot of things, uh, even if a lot of people would consider uh, potentially using box modeling or other stuff. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to, like I said, show you a couple of different ways to think about how you can possibly model. Obviously, we're going to shoot for creating this, uh, no pun intended, for this gun here. Um, and uh, it's low poly, it's simple, uh, it's not meant to be anything complex, but like I said, it's more to give you an idea. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go in and model the whole thing either. That will take too long. So for trying to keep the, uh, the video's uh, length down just a little bit, uh, I'm not going to go too crazy, but I do want to show you a couple of techniques. So let's start here. Now, obviously, once again, to also save time, I'm going to use an image that's already in here. Of course, you make a plane, put the image on it, and so on. Okay, now I'm going to hit F for front view here, so we get a perfect front view. You need to be in front view when you do this. Uh, otherwise, uh, you uh, won't uh, won't work. If you kind of rotate to be like on a side view and try to draw your splines, because that's what I'm going to draw with here to trace the outside uh, of this gun. If I attempt to do that in, say, any other view outside of literally a side front view kind of thing, it's going to draw on the ground because by default splines will draw on the ground plane um, regardless. So anyways, let's start off by tracing the major body of the gun. So I'm actually going to skip certain parts of it. Um, and the way I look at it is I go, okay, well, what's the major shape going on here? Now, once again, like I said, I'm going to be low poly here. So you can see I'm kind of cutting off things that are more of extrusions on the gun. All right, and I'm also, as I said before, keeping it a little lower poly. I mean, you can always add more polys to it uh, later, or of course, you can model in such a way that you curve your splines so you get a lot more polys. I'm just going to make it so that every one of my splines is basically um, a, a cut here. So let's go in and we'll do this. I'm going to hold shift and we can do straight lines here. So we'll hold shift. We'll dip it down a little bit. Hold shift again. Do another straight line. Come back up. Hold shift. Go all the way out. Obviously, it doesn't match the perfect uh, the picture perfectly, but it's fine. Come in here, hold shift, let go of shift to do this curve. Okay, and then we'll come down here. We'll click on that. Let's go down a little bit. So we're just you know we're getting a little off here, but you can see how the image is a little uh, a little tilted. Um, but yeah, I mean you can always go back and fix it. But for now, I'm just trying to keep things just a little simpler, just to help show you guys some possibilities as far as modeling is concerned. All right, so as I said before, I only really modeled or traced out the basic shape um, of the weapon here, and a lot of these other little parts are going to be done separately. Okay, so with this spline, however, we can get out of the tool by right-clicking here. I'm going to add a modifier called Extrude here, and uh, I already have a, a setting on it from the last time I've done this, but uh, by default, it usually starts at 1. You just have to increase the amount up. What we're looking for is about halfway thickness of the gun, and this is... This is pretty good, right? As we can see here, it's probably a nice halfway thickness to the gun. Um, so what we'll do with this uh, is we will flatten it down, convert to edible poly here. And I'll actually go in, select polys, and delete this, this poly here, right, on the inside of the model. And then we're going to put a symmetry modifier on this. So we'll get out of this. We're going to put a symmetry modifier. So we'll scroll down the last S right there. Obviously, the wrong angle. We want Z. So there you go. That looks pretty good. Right, maybe a little thick. Um, you know, well, we can either grab the mirror tool here and we can mush it in a little bit. So it's just the whole gun is about that thick instead. A little bit better. All right. So, but obviously the problem here with this weapon, if doing this kind of type of modeling, you can see that it's very boxy. So what you really have to do in understanding, and of course you have this ridiculous end gun on the side. So these are the two things you have to consider that while you won't, you'll get a shape, and this is what I like doing, like I said, I get the basic shape of a more complex object. You really have to learn how to cut it up so that you can get your loops in there and in your quads and so on, but also how to add some roundness to it. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go down to Edible Poly here. We're going to turn on this little show end result so we can see it always at any given point in its final view. I'm going to hit F4 so we can see our lines here. I'm going to start curving some of these lines. Okay. Now, as far as the gun goes, you can see I've actually added, as right here, we have a lot of different sections where we take the geometry and we curve it off. Okay, so let's curve off, say, we'll start off with the back here. So I'm going to go into my edges, and we will grab the edges I want to curve. So we'll grab this one, this one, this one. Let me double-click off that, just make sure I'm not getting those lines. All the way up to this 
little thing right here. So I'm not going to go past that. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to add a chamfer. So we'll click on chamfer. And uh, we're going to increase the amount here so we get a little bit more curve. And you always want to be careful, of course, too, of collapsing polys. So you can see right here the polys are collapsing in on themselves. Either you have to do a lot less, as you can see here, or start deselecting some lines you don't want. So you can see it happens once I get past this point. It inverts this poly. Uh, always be mindful of that. We're going to add a couple of cuts to this. And um, I think, you know, the problem is this little piece right here, I'm going to deselect it because it's just causing problems. We can always go back and add cuts or do whatever we need to later. But now I can increase the amount and get a lot more curvature without it collapsing on itself in that particular section. All right. So now we get a lot more of a curve here. Obviously, the more you increase the amount, the more you can get a curve. And then you can add extra cuts if you really want to go high poly here. We're just going to keep it low poly just for the video to make it more simple. All right, so there you go. That looks like a nice like roundness to it. So we'll hit check. We'll go with that. And then we can go to the other side and do the same thing. So now I'm going to grab all of these edges that would constitute uh, a curve over here. So we'll go all the way up till we get to, let's see, I think until we get to this one here. So we'll go all the way through here. All right, so same thing, chamfer, boom. Okay, there you go. Looking pretty good, right? The settings from the other one works fairly well on this one we don't have to do too much of it so i'm just going to hit check and keep that okay so there you go we're starting to get some roundness to this all right but of course once again we're still dealing with you know end gons and some other stuff but we do need to add just a little bit more to the curvature before we move on so i'm going to come up here and grab the top row because this top row is an independent curvature also so just this entire row and that's it all right so same thing let's add our chamfer okay to this and you'll actually see that we're starting to get some weird in some cases you'll get like how your polys are not your polys but your edges here from um, these polys getting pushed down are not going to be straight we can clean those up in a moment all right so once again you can play with the numbers here you can see as i increase this we get more of a curve here but we get a more dramatic kind of line with that but as i said before we can clean it so maybe we'll keep that because i do like the, uh, the the roundness of this part like coming down here so that looks pretty good, uh, but we'll clean it up. So let's just hit check here and let's do that cleanup. So let's start off by clicking on these edges and we're going to pull those down a bit, right? So now that it's a little bit closer, right, to the shape of this. And this little uh, vertice there can go down also. Uh, and obviously, since we're dealing with a symmetry, right, it's going to just clean itself up on the other side. So we're going to sit there and worry about it. So we can like pull something down like this. Of course, you can see this is getting pulled up here. We can always clean that up later. This is actually, you know, the, the model itself kind of collapsing in on itself on the uh, symmetry. But as soon as we do the symmetry, this weird stuff would disappear and we just have the line in the middle and then we can clean that up. All right. So what I would do from here pretty much is I'll grab all of these that I want to be straight. So all these, um, in this case, these vertices that I want to be straight. And uh, actually what I would do here too is I would uh, weld this. So let's try that first. Let's target weld just this to this because we don't actually need that poly there. And now we can go in and grab these verts again. I'm right click, get out of that tool. We'll grab just these verts that I want to be all in the same plane over here. And then we'll grab the scale tool with R here and we'll flatten it down. All right. So we'll just keep going until it really doesn't move anymore. And now that should be on a nice, perfectly flat plane. And uh, we could have also, let me undo that real fast. Let's go back and we'll grab this one too, just for argument's sake, so we don't have to clean it up later. And we'll do this, and there we go. So now it should all be nice and straight there. All right, cool. Now, if you wanna add a little bit more you know, drama to this, uh, uh, I shouldn't say drama, but a little bit more of a drastic difference, you can kind of pull this down or whatever. Um, but that should be fine as is. So now we have a nice curvature there. And then this puppy could be cleaned up too. So you can see how this guy's kind of getting lowered down. So we can do the same thing. We can grab all of these verts. And actually, I don't want to grab those two. We're just going to grab these. And we'll deselect this guy here. Grab this top guy and this one here. And we can do the same thing where we can kind of line them up so we don't get this kind of weird look to it. So once again, R and uh, scale them down. There you go. All right. So now we've got the geometry cleaning up a little bit. Okay, looking a little nicer, a little straighter there. Uh, once again, this doesn't have a nice curvature to it. So maybe what I would do is with all of these verts, and I would even gla grab these two for the moment, I'll just move them down a hair so we get a little bit better of a curve like that. That looks pretty good. So, all right, cool. Um, 
Now, from here, once we've done that, this is kind of the major curves that we got going on. Um, now we can start cleaning it up a little bit as far as adding uh, some cuts to it that go all the way through, right? Um, you can see even here in the, in the image that it has like, you know, a larger bend and it thins out and stuff like that. Of course, you can always come in with your vertices here and start moving them out to kind of better match. You know, maybe I'll grab both of these here, pull them out a little bit. Now, it looks like it does need more cuts, right, to get the same curve. If you ever want to add more cuts, it's pretty simple, of course. We just go with our edge tool there, and then we'll just go to ring. For this particular case, we'll do a ring, and I'll select all of these, and then we can just click on connect, and we'll cut through them. Now we have an extra loop there so that we can grab or uh, this poly and kind of, or not poly, but vertice there and pull it out and whatever. And so you can sit there and twiddle around with it all day to try to get this uh, effect right and then these you know you'd kind of move in but just like i said for time's sake you'll get the idea and then we can go in and clean it up later all right so we take we can start taking a look too as of how these these pieces kind of loop themselves around and whether they fit out with anything this if we really wanted to clean it up to go all the way around i mean we could do the same thing here where we go into edges so we'll go grab edges again click on this and then let's go in and add a connect. Now the line's way up here. We would want to pull it down a little bit. The cool thing is we can come down here and we go to our constraints. We'll set it to an edge constraint. And I'm going to move it down so it stays on that same edge and goes all the way down here. So you could have moved it in the connect, but I just wanted to show you this new tool. Now, of course, don't forget to take off edge constraint because otherwise you'll be wondering why when you go to move, everything's starting getting weird and going all over the place. All right? But that just keeps it so that line stays straight. If I didn't have edge constraints on, I'll try that. I'll just show you real fast. If I don't have edge constraints on, I go to move. And of course, if I move it down, whoops, I, went to, I didn't grab all of the polys there. Let's undo that. And I go to move it down, you're going to have that happen, right? So that's a little silly. If you have the edge constraints on and you just move it down, it follows that existing edge. You can get a little bit lower. All right, so vertices here, we'll grab these two verts and we will connect them. So where you connect, up here, boom, and there you go. So now we have kind of our uh, loop going all the way around. All right, same can be said with these. We can come in here and connect them, all right? So this is why I said before, you know, we have this crazy end gone. Well, now we can come in once we've started to add the depth that we want and actually make the connections to the different places. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect and something doesn't quite line up, then just consider adding extra cuts. So this lines up better with this one right here. So I'm just gonna line those up. And then here, what we can do is, of course, we can go back and we can grab our edges, grab all of these guys right there, and then do a connect, but with two cuts instead of one, and then hit check. And now we have those extra cuts going through and we can go like this and then connect and go like this and connect, okay? Oops, let's try that again, there we go. All right, so looking a little bit cleaner. Right now you got geometry going all the way through. Of course, we'd still wanna clean up, say, something like this down here. These are kind of floating verts also. What you could do is you can kind of cut and go through all the way to the bottom, cut and go through and whatever. Uh, I'm just gonna not do that just to save time because it's such a minor thing, but you get the idea, okay? Same things can be said with some of the way these, these polys are cut things like that, how you want to do them. What I'm going to do actually from here real quick is I'm actually going to take, let's see, I'll take this polygon and uh, let's see, right where it starts bending in here and we'll connect these. Okay, so it's a little off as far as being perfectly straight. Uh, if I want to get those a little bit straighter, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab all these verts here, including this guy right here and now we will straighten them out. So let's grab our scale tool again with R. We'll straighten them out. Whoops, do I have constraints still on? Yes, I do. We'll hit none and uh, try this again. There we go. All right, looking a little better and then we can kind of move it up, move it down wherever it needs to go. So it's like with these guys right here, we're getting some weird stuff, right? Because I moved it. So if I undo that actually real fast and we'll take a look at where that angle was. So that's kind of lifting up a little bit. And part of it getting weird is that we didn't connect. Like we'd probably want our lines to cut through to the other side and so on. So we can kind of fiddle around with that and it doesn't look so ridiculous. So let me actually do that first. So let's come in and hit cut and we'll just make a cut that goes across and I'll just have it cut down here. And then same thing can be said with this one. We'll just have it cut to here, whatever. Um, and then you would probably want, of course, to have cuts that went all the way up and through. Um, let's see. We can probably do this one here down to this guy. And then this one here up to this guy. There you go. That's pretty good. 
once again, ignore this weird stuff because that's going to disappear when we uh, when we take the symmetry or we go to the top. So let me even show you. If I click back on the top of symmetry, you'll see how that disappears, right? This part, too, we can kind of collapse. This is not going fully in. So let's just say even if we grab our mirror and let's move it in a little bit. And so switch the W here and we'll move it in a hair until that disappears. There you go. So it looks a little bit better there. We can go back down. All right. So there you go. It's starting to look a little nicer in that sense. But if we, like I said before, we can grab these verts again and straighten these out again. So go and click, click, click. Those three vertices there in particular. And we'll R scale it down and cool. And then we can lift it up a little bit too. So let's lift it up. There. Looks a little better. And actually, <laughs> I keep messing up here. We can also grab these because these are pretty much on the same line as those other ones so we want to do that so that we don't get some weird geometry issues here so let's try this one more time i know we can do this awesome and then we'll move it up and then i will deselect these over here and we'll just move these up so it won't be perfectly straight but i just wanted to fix that for all intents and purposes it's straight enough all right cool so now we can also then start making cuts that go up right so these need to connect with their kind of sibling up here so if we go and grab the cut tool again also we can come in here and connect these two I can connect this to this yes we have a, a triangle here um, of course we can fix that easily if I was just to make a cut from here to here right so we're always looking for that I mean to be honest with you triangles aren't super horrible it only depends on if you're going high poly or if you're animating uh, otherwise if you're not doing high poly or animating and I'll just backspace that out there we go um, of course then I guess I made a triangle there and so on but we can keep doing that infinitely or I can collapse that down actually that would probably well then that'd be a triangle too but we'd have to make this loop go up and through so this would have to come up here and then connect through there and then boom we'd be good so maybe I'll just do that real quick just to show you instead of being too lazy so we'll come up here and we'll go like this and connect up into here and let's make another cut from here to here. There you go. All right, so now we can get rid of this one edge. Oh, whoops, I didn't want to do the quads there. Okay, back, no, not quad, yeah, there we go. Cool, so now we have our, uh, our quads uh, set up. All right, and you can continue to keep doing that and cleaning things up. You know, obviously we can go in here and grab these vertices. Actually, I'll do these two here because these make more sense. And we'll connect those so our friend connects right there. And then lastly, we can also do another connect through all of these with edges. All right, so we'll grab all of those edges. Boom, boom, boom. And we'll hit connect. And actually, I'll undo that because I already have it set it to two. So let's go to one. Check. And then we can grab this vertex and this vertex and connect. Boom. There you go. So now you have your loop going through. So that's, it's not perfectly clean. You can still see that we got these and so on. Um, but once again, for time's sake, I will just move on from here or maybe just go in and, uh, you know, you obviously you could have also did this connection and let's just do that real quick since it does bother me. So we'll come in here. Boom. That, there you go. And I guess you could do this too. And we can always, uh, well, find a way to clean up that one triangle there too. But you know, close enough, right? So you're really getting the gist of it. And honestly, once again, I think if we were just to target weld that, we would fix the problem. So target weld from here to here. And um, we can pretty much get rid of this whole loop if we wanted to, because I don't really see it doing a lot of difference there. So if we do this, kind of connect all of these, we should now have a fixed set. And this one up to here. There we go. So there, goodbye tries. Okay, cool. Um, all right, yada, 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 you get the point. We can keep cleaning it up forever. So last couple of things I would do to kind of really fix this up and the way I had it in the other one is I actually grabbed these polygons here and extruded them out a bit. So we can come in over here and extrude them. A little too much, obviously. So let's uh, drop that down a bit. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. So we're adding some more definition to the weapon, right? As that's kind of coming out. If you want it to slant down like this one does, right? Once you're done, we can just grab this whole uh, edge set of edges here that are on the outside and just move them down just a hair All right nothing too crazy come in and just move them down a hair whoops I have some selected on the bottom here so let's deselect all that try that again whoops I think I deselected too much 
All right. Problem, of course, too, is when you're in a symmetry. And I'm actually just going to collapse the symmetry down. <clears throat> but uh, there we go. So this will actually be easier for me to see and you guys to see what I'm doing here. So we can grab all of these. Whoops. And grab that and deselect that and then move it down a hair. And we can do symmetry again uh, after we're done. All right. So, and then you'll see something like this, like what I did with this, and I kind of broke this one a little bit. Um, yeah, you can see right there, that's the problem. You can you can either pull that in a little bit, or you could theoretically uh, add a cut here, which is creating a try, but it is fixing that polygon, so we don't get that weird thing going on. All right. So there you go. Now, what I would do here to add this kind of round part is... I would actually come in and make this a cut. So I can come in here and cut this. So that's what we'll do is we'll grab our vertex here and we will use the cut tool. And I will start up here because I'm actually going to delete these two polygons. So I'm going to start up here, right, on this piece. And we'll come down a little bit. And then we're going to start to curve it in a little bit from here. Something like this maybe. And then we're going to end it right here. Now the reason why I'm ending it before we get to this point is I want a little bit of a flat point to the curve, right? So it doesn't turn into a point on the base of it. This will add a little bit of thickness to it, okay? So with this little piece in there now, what we can do is I'm going to extrude, actually, let's see here. We can cut this all the way through to the front. So I can either make a cut that goes all the way across because we're gonna eventually do this, but let's extrude this part first and then we use the extrusion as reference. So let me grab the polygon right here and we will extrude it. And we're going to match the polys that are here. So there's a poly right here. So let's, we're just eyeballing it. We don't need it to be perfect. Remember, we can always line it up later. And then we'll hit plus, and we'll do it again to the end. Something like this. It almost looks like he's got a little mouth there. All right, but we'll hit check. Okay, and there's a couple things you need to do. So we're going to eventually weld these up. So I need to delete these polygons. So if we're going to weld this whole stuff up, we have to delete those. And then i got to delete the polys on the back side of it. Okay, just like that. And now what we can do is we can grab all of these edges here and we can lift them up, right? So we'll grab all these edges and lift them up. And what we wanted to do was basically cut into this piece and weld them in, okay? So let's go to a B for bottom here. Take a look. All right, so let's see. That's our piece right there. So right here is our cut. This is where we want to make our cut. So I'm going to grab the vertex here. We're going to grab a cut tool. And I'm going to make a cut that goes across all the way to here. Okay, let me hit P for perspective there. All right, so now what I also want to do here is I want to delete the polygons inside here. Otherwise, we can't connect or weld those up. So let's go in there and clean that up. And now let's go and target weld. So let me grab vertices here and target weld. And we will target weld this to this, this to this, this to this. And... We have a little bit of funkiness going on here, but we'll go this to this. There we go. All right. So that's what I was looking to do. Now, if we redo our symmetry here, so we'll go down to symmetry, the very last S, boom, Z. Okay, cool. So as you can see here, the middle point of the object is still a little bit out there, so we would have to grab the mirror and pull it in until it looks more or less what we want something like that and that's a lot better there cool so we're really getting the shape of the gun down now right that's i mean we're really close okay so let's collapse all of this now you could keep or delete depending on whether you want it this middle um, loop that goes all the way around because technically speaking it's not needed just adding geometry um, so you can hit back you can hit control backspace to delete all the vertices along with the edge uh, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab this to create the, all the stuff that's going on over here. We're going to grab these two polys here. And I'm going to inset them. So we'll go and we'll inset. So we'll inset them a certain amount. Say something to this effect. So they're insetting as a group. Hitting check. And then we're going to extrude them out a little bit. Way too far. So let's pull that in there. So we can create something that looks a little bit like this. Not perfect. I mean, obviously, this is a separate piece. This really is not how the front looks. But, you know, I don't get a clear view of the front, and nor do I care too much in this case. Just showing you guys a little bit about what are some alternatives to make something look nice or not. All right, so there we go. We've got that down. That's kind of popping out. Of course, we need to make the barrel. 
Okay, so what we can do to make the barrel, and uh, this could be pretty simple here, is we can go back to our creation tab and go back to this. Uh, and what we're gonna do is actually, I'm gonna go to an extended primitive and we are going to choose, where are you? Um, or is it still a normal primitive or is it hose? I'm trying to remember. I think it's hose. Is it hose? No, it's not hose. That's silly. That would not be something I'd want to add. Um, I forget the name of it. Tube. Hello. All right. So there it is. Tube. That's what we're looking for. So we'll put the tube right there. We'll scale it in a little bit and uh and then up right and the reason why we want to do this is we kind of want to place it inside the front of the barrel of that gun so let's rotate this guy here so we can turn on our rotational snaps rotate down till we get to 90. okay now we're going to align this with the, whoops that's mirroring we don't want to do that this is a line so we'll click on this and we will align it and just hit okay it's fine it's not going to be perfect because our center point is not in the middle of the object I, well maybe it is now now that i collapse it down and uh, we'll move this forward and we'll lift it up here so you can scale it to the size that you need it to right now it's just a little large so we'll scale it down and uh, kind of have it go back it doesn't have to go all the way out but we do want it to pop out a little bit right so we can do that right now i think that's way too many sides too so let's cut this down because if we have too many sides it's going to be harder to make connections to all of the points um 10 looks good there right with it kind of popping out just enough we can kind of cut this out a little bit. And actually, now that I think about it, the problem with tube is that when we go to do our uh, cut here of subtraction, uh, I won't add this. So let's actually just completely delete the tube and uh, use cylinder instead, All right? So I'll show you how to do it with a cylinder instead of a tube. So let's go up with that. A lot of extra work that wasn't necessary, but hey, you know, we learned together. All right, so let's go to 90 and it whoops now i'm rotating the gun and uh, let's line this with this guy okay whoops i didn't grab it lots of mistakes lots of mistakes doesn't matter how many years you've been doing this right you can you can still make plenty of mistakes and you probably don't always know exactly what you're doing or how to do it you just keep guessing you can kind of see a little bit of that going on with what i'm doing here all right so now we'll scale it down a lot further we don't need the barrel to go all the way back as i already mentioned so and it probably doesn't line up properly anyway so that's beside the point scale it down a little bit more way too way too thick and uh this will still give us what we're looking for okay and so i don't decrease the length of it anymore i could always go back in here and just decrease the radius keep it a little bit smaller something like that all right, cool. So now we can just Boolean this. So I'll grab the main model here. We'll go over to our compound and we'll choose Boolean. We'll go to, uh, let's see here, subtract, add operand and grab boom. And there's our little cut inside. And actually too much, right? Forgot to, we'll get back to this guy in a moment. So let's click on this guy here. Forgot to drop this guy back down to 10. We'll try that again. All right. So what we got Boolean, subtract, add operand, Boom. Now, you see what happened, though, right? When I kind of undid that, I'm going to actually go back and uh, let's go. Yeah, see, this is what happened with this puppy on here. So with the Boolean on the top here, right, what I ended up doing was I ended up triangulating a lot of this stuff. So it's kind of messed it up, which is one of the reasons why. Now, yeah, you can go back and clean it. Um, but it's like one of the reasons why, like, you try to avoid Boolean for the most part is things like this right is that the uh the bullion it can't seem you know at this point um let's see where are you whoops didn't want to do that see if i can undo far enough back i hope i can prop no yeah there we go there okay so um there's our object let's reduce the radius you guys are just getting this just absolute you know gallery of mistakes here um but you know as i mentioned before it is a learning process no matter how many years you've done this but it does, like I said, give me an opportunity to show you how Boolean can actually kind of jack up your model if you, if you do it wrong. So let's double check this down to 10. And we don't need any uh, height segments, by the way. I was just wasting it on that, too. So let's drop that back. Cool. Now, now I think we're good, right? Let's hope. All right, so Boolean. And uh, now, holy crap. Let's go in and subtract. 
and then add operand and I'm backwards because you know reasons all right I really think we can do this one more time right you can do it with me here. all right so boolean <laughs> see now it's already jacking it up so um, another option let's let's do this so we don't have to worry about the boolean. It actually worked the last time I did do boolean on this and it didn't jack it up but I'm getting too many results so this gives me an excuse to potentially show you guys how we can do it this way instead so this I guess at this point it's not turned into anything real quick um, but I have my snaps on. I'm going to make sure I have vertice on here. I'll shut off pivot, so I'm going to grab that by mistake. I'm going to grab this model. We're going to snap it so that we get the uh, – turn snaps back on here – so that we get the snap to actually snap right to this edge here. Okay, and there's a good reason for this. Now I'm going to shut snaps off. Okay, and now we'll kind of put this in here. We'll just eyeball the center of it. Okay, close enough scale it down somewhere wherever we want to put the barrel and that looks pretty good so now what we can do actually is what we can do is grab this geometry go to vertices go to cut and we're going to use this piece that we have perfectly lined up here and use these actual verts to just cut all the way around so turn these back on and we can come in here and we can just cut so we want to make sure that we're snapping to those vertices boom boom whoops let's undo that because it's deciding to snap to some other vertice somewhere in the middle of the object. So let's try this again. Okay, it should go there. Oh, okay, you know what's going on too. And you see it'll do this because it has to close it off. So we'll have to loop all the way around before we can officially close this guy off here. So we'll just come in as such and close it off there. And we can right-click. All right, so now we can begin to clean up the rest of it. All right, remember, you only have to do one side if we're going to, you know, just do another um, another symmetry. And we'll shut off our snaps there. So, okay, vertex to vertex. Okay, and then we will connect those. So, scroll up here and connect. All right, vertex to vertex here, connect. And just continue to do this. Whoops, we got to make sure we grab both of them there. And uh, try that one more time. Connect. If it's not connecting, then we might have either an issue with the geometry or you can just use the cut tool and see if that does it instead. Yeah, so let's let's get rid of this guy now, uh, this little cylinder here. Okay. Whoops. That's the opposite. So we can click on it over here, cylinder. Delete it over there instead. So what we'll do is we'll actually delete this polygon out. Mm -hmm. See, it's getting a little nuts here, it looks like. So we got to add our extra connections here before we fix this up. Let me just do this for now. Connect it to the other side. Doesn't want to connect for me. Connect. All right, well, let's go and delete our polygon here then. We're starting to get too much nonsense going on here. Ah, see, this is what happened. We'll invert this. So let's go back. Get to keep that guy there. Let's start cutting some of these polygons. So I'm going to deselect all this stuff. Just get rid of the weird crap. There we go. That looks better. Don't know what happened there. I got some weird stuff going on, but I just fixed it up. All right. Now, it could have been like when I was starting to make these connections here. So let's find out if we got anything else weird going on. No, and we'll try just deleting this guy, and no. Okay, so let's uh, let's inset this guy a little bit, first of all, so we can give some thickness to our gun here. And then we will extrude this in backwards. So we'll go in the other direction. And it looks like what's going on here is that there's two polys. There's this one and this one, so I'm fine with that for now, because we can just delete this and then clean it up with... And so we'll go like this, delete that polygon. And what we can do is we can grab this and we can start bridging some of our pieces here. So this is taking longer than I expected, but it is a pretty good teaching example. So, all right, so now we can kind of grab stuff like this and just start bridging it over, right? So bridge and so on and so forth, right? So we can go in and just clean it up. And keep in mind, we don't have to worry about doing both sides. We can just do one of the sides. So, oops. 
So let's, uh, why are you being weird? Oh, that's right. I have the bridge tool on, so we'll just hit check. I didn't hit the button. All right, boom, bridge. And it looks like it's snapping to the wrong thing because, as you can see here, I deleted a polygon. So let's get rid of this guy. More issues, but this is how we work, right? We troubleshoot through the problem. So let's take a look at this piece right here. So let's go to edge and we'll go edge to edge and let's bridge that. There you go. Now we should be able to grab this to this and we can bridge. All right. Same could be said. Whoops. I keep grabbing the tool instead of hitting the button. So we'll do this again and bridge. Okay, doesn't want to do that. So what we can do is manually create a new polygon. So let's go to polygon. And we'll hit, uh, where's our friend create? There we go. And uh, let's just create it. So we'll go from here to here to here to this point to this point. There you go. And same could be said with this one up here. Um, I guess we can bridge that one first and then, uh, and then go across. So let's do edge. So grab two edges. There you go, All right? Let's see where are we bridge right there, and then we can finish the other one by going back to polygon and create, and we'll go like this and snap on all of these four points and close her off. All right, cool. So now you pretty much can get what you want by just doing our symmetry. So we'll come in here and let's go down to symmetry again. All right, pick the right symmetry angle and move the symmetry mirror in so let's move that midpoint in until we don't have like this silly nonsense going on there right there it's pretty good cool all right and uh collapse all that and we could also then go in here and grab all of these guys right and extrude them out so now that we've created this little section here we can go in and extrude out all of this that's going way out so let's go back in something to this effect and there you go all right so this would be a really good nice foundational piece right and like i said we can go in and clean up a little bit more play with some smoothing groups yada 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 we get the idea and then what's going on is you actually see with this one you can see that it's different elements here let me delete the main gun and then you'll see that i modeled out all of these other pieces as you can tell as separate and i did the same techniques right with it kind of tracing the shape and then extruding it and then making cuts to it and whatever uh st stuff like this could even be done in texture i just did it just you know uh just to make it look a little cooler geometry wise but as i said before it can work just the same so if i was to say just insert all of these different various pieces as you can see here into the side of the gun it would work pretty much the same way as i had it for the other one now these probably won't scale the same way but you can see that they probably can be scaled out a little bit a little thickness to them so that say that kind of stuff pops out but you can still see how the rest of these things kind of fit in and there you go you have a more complete gun right but just to kind of give you guys a better look at the separate pieces here these are all different pieces from this which is kind of is a you know, I just traced it and all i did was flare out these two points so i traced it in this view flared out the two ends right then you just got a trigger a little simple trigger a couple of these pieces that jet out right you got your hammer and other stuff in the back your line of sight and so on right and you can see that's the little sight in the front of it so if i undo and get that actually I'll just move it back right and we'll get that to kind of line up again you can kind of see the little extra pieces and how they kind of fit with the rest of the model we'll move it in a bit this way too there you go so that's kind of how they fit if we were to make both of them the same color so we'll just make them both a gray there it matches a little bit better right and you get the idea so that gives you a nice good way of thinking about modeling and like i said i did run into a couple issues there but there's some nice troubleshooting things that you can kind of think about when you're looking at your own geometry uh, and hopefully this kind of helps you see modeling just a little bit differently uh, helps you understand how to clean up meshes how to add quads you know how to use splines and add roundness to them and so on so thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video